Hello everyone. I'm happy to be with you all here today. I am excited to be meeting you virtually, members of the Embassy Empowers program. My name is Sara Minkara and I'm the Special Advisor on International Disability Rights. I'm going to start off with a little bit about my background and then we're going to dive into this whole conversation around employment. I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm a friend, I'm a colleague, I'm a neighbor. I'm a traveler, I'm an introvert, I love math, I'm a troublemaker. I love Mr. Thriller audiobooks, I love to eat chicken, my favorite color is green, I love horses, I love nature, and I love having coffee with friends and family. I'm a woman, I'm Muslim, I'm blind, I'm a person with a disability, and I'm very proud of it. And to be honest, to come to a point in my life where I say I am proud to be a person with a disability was a journey. I lost my eyesight when I was seven years old. My mom realizing that her second daughter has also become blind. And I remember that moment in that day where she hugged me really tightly and she said, Sada, everything is going to be okay. And everything was okay because of her. Because of her, my family who did not allow society's expectations or lack thereof when it came to disability to ever enter the home. Because what's the narrative in society? It's that I can't you're less than, you're a burden, you're incapable, I feel bad for you, and on and on. That narrative, when we internalize and embrace that, then we never explore our value and our potential. But instead, my mom told both my sister and me, you're, you're gonna have dreams, you're gonna have ambitions, what do you hope to do? What do you hope to be? What is your ambitions and dreams? Imagine a world with no limitation, what do you want to be? That in itself, that narrative that she brought home, is why I'm here. That narrative when we sh that she brought home is why be my sister became a professor in bioengineering and has a PhD in computational chemistry, a blind scientist. And it's because she had a narrative around her that said, you're going to have dreams and ambitions, and you're going to explore your value. And because of her, I majored in math and economics, I founded two companies, and I'm in this role. But it's because of that narrative. There's two main points I always tell people with disabilities. Point number one, when we go out in the world and we always hear that you're different and you're less than and you're incapable and you're a burden, let's be real. We embrace some of that, we internalize that. And when we internalize it, we don't allow ourselves to really explore our value and our dreams and what do we hope to do and be. So I always ask myself, because to be honest, I've embraced, I've internalized some of this ableism. I always ask myself, through a compassionate lens, what parts of me and what parts of my disability am I not embracing? What parts of me and my potential am I not exploring? Why not? And how can I really embrace this narrative that I have the right to have dreams and ambitions and explore my value? So that is point number one. How do we really understand how we've internalized ableism? Why that's important for work? Because when you go into work and you're exploring what your future is in your career, you want to look within, you want to explore your value and potential and not hear from the outside. Number two, I always say, Imagine a world with no limitations. What do you hope to be? Imagine, just sit down one day and reflect on that and lay out a, 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 a dream mapping of that. What does that look like? What, is, what do you hope to do from a point of what are your strengths, what makes you happy, and what is your purpose? Bring that all together. Put that forward. And even if you might not achieve it this year or in the next year or five or 10 years, but always has it, have it as a North Star to work towards. I remember recently talking to a young individual with a disability. He was an intern and he told, and I told him, I was like, what do you hope to be in, you know, in 20 years? He's like, I don't know. And after the conversation, he told me, well, I hope to actually, my dream is to work in this company and become this person, this, this type of person. I was like, 
are you working towards that? He's like, no, I feel like I'm not going to be good enough. Why? It's because we've internalized that ableism. Look within. Be curious and compassionate with yourself, but then also create that same space for others. We also have the power within us to make that empowering space for our colleagues and others, our, our friends, and other people with disabilities. See the power within you to make a change for other people's lives as well. Now to managers and to companies. You know, when you employ people with disability, it's actually a value for your company. It's proven that, that your profit and your bottom line improves and is better when you, improve, when you employ persons with disabilities. So this is a point for persons with disabilities. You bring value to companies when you're hired. Do not feel like you're a burden. Do not feel like they're doing you a favor. But instead, really understand that you bring value. So when you ask for accommodation, it's not an add-on. It actually brings a value to you and the company. I want to end with a really important point. When we include persons with disabilities in our system, in our companies, in our businesses, we all benefit. Thank you so much, and I'm excited to see where um, excited to see where all of you will end up in the future. Thank you.